Sayyidatu As-Sayyidah, Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to talk about uh, uh, effective performance time. Uh, effective performance time is a very important uh, to commercial pilots and uh, is a very, very special importance to military pilot. Uh, effective performance time is also known as the time of useful consciousness or it is uh, referred or defined as the maximum length of time that an airman or a military pilot can perform a useful uh, flying task in an environment which is inadequate uh, in, of oxygen. The uh, uh, effective performance time differ uh, depending on the altitude of the aircraft. In which altitude, uh, the higher the altitude, the shorter the effective performance time. Now, as we all know, hypoxia is lack of sufficient oxygen supplies to meet the tissue demands. Uh, all individual, in fact, they suffer the symptoms of hypoxia uh, uh, if they are at the sea level, uh, living at the sea, sea level, they will start suffering or experiencing the symptoms of hypoxia at 10,000 feet. Um, hypoxia has four stages which is uh, classified on the performance decrement uh, depending on the altitude and arterial blood saturation of oxygen. Now, the, there is the indifferent stage. This is stage number one, the compensatory stage, the disturbance stage, and the critical stage. Uh, the indifferent stage is st starts between 0 to 5,000 feet and the oxygen saturation is about 87 to 98 percent. The first thing that happens in the indifferent stage is a loss of dark vision which occurs at 5,000 feet. Then there is progressive diminution of acu uh, visual acuity. It starts by 10 percent uh, at, uh, at the altitude of 5,000 feet. Then inability to perform a new task, and there is a slight increase in the heart and respiratory rate. The compensatory stage occurs between 10,000 to 15,000 feet and the oxygen saturation is between 87 80 to 87%. Uh, as the name implies, the compensatory stage is, is uh, due to cardiovascular and respiratory physiological responses, uh, which provides some degree of compensation. Uh, it is characterized by drowsiness, uh, decreased judgment, uh, and memory difficulty and difficulty in performing new tasks requiring mental alertness and uh, or discrete uh, uh, fine motor movements short term memory and loss uh, uh, are lost also and the loss can be detected at uh, 11,000 to 12,000 feet we talked about the short memory and the long memory. We said that the short memory, uh, for those who missed our episodes, uh, uh, refer to uh, information which are returned for a short time in the brain, and uh, uh, after that it will be forgotten, and the short memory is the center of the error occurrence, and it is the working memory. So, uh, in the the uh, compensatory stage is uh, the short memory is start to be affected between 11,000 to 12,000 feet. Now, the cardiac chemoreceptors and baroreceptors, which are, are situated in the aorta, they will send continuous stimuli to the central uh, chemoreceptors in the medulla. This will trigger the sinus node 
and will increase the heart rate and, com uh, and respiratory rate in order to compensate for the uh, deficiency of oxygen. Now the disturbance stage will occur between 15,000 to 20,000 feet. The oxygen saturation is going to be between 80 to 65 percent. Normal physi physiological mechanism no more offer protection from hypoxia. The uh, chemoreceptors will fail to compensate anymore uh, to uh, the hypoxic environments. So the individual will suffer from headache, dizziness, uh, seminalness, uh, air hunger, euphoria, and fatigue. Euphoria is actually uh, a very strange dreamy state. Uh, euphoria is a, a nice feeling for those people who are suffering from decompression. They don't want to wake up. They want this dreamy state to continue and continue. Therefore, uh, some people, they commit suicides by uh, locking themselves in a garage and closing the doors and then they start to inhale uh, carbon monoxide and this will lead them to uh, uh, experience the effect of euphoria. It's a very nice feeling and like you want to die and never come back, euphoria. The critical stage starts between 20,000 to 23,000 feet. The oxygen saturation is, is between 65 to 60 percent. Mental performance deteriorates progressively and confusion, dizziness occur within a few minutes. Total incapacitation with loss of consciousness occur rapidly with no warning. Okay, now the effective performance time, uh, uh, as we said, it, it is the time which is available. It is a very short time uh, which is available for the pilot to, to, per, to perform a useful uh, flying task. Uh, so this uh, effective performance time depends on the altitude of the aircraft. Uh, 18,000 feet, the barometric pressure is 380. The effective performance time is at 22,000. The effective performance time is 10 minutes, 25,000, three to five minutes, 28,000, 2.5 to three minutes, 30,000, one to two minutes, 35,000, 0.5 to one minutes. Uh, at, of course, higher, higher altitude, um, like 40,000, the effective performance time is 15 to 20 seconds, and 43,000, 9 to 12 seconds. This is very important for military pilots who are flying at very high altitude. So what does it mean, uh, the effective performance time means that whenever there is a sudden decompression and the aircraft is start losing oxygen and uh, pressure from inside, what happens? The pilot has to put his own oxygen mask immediately whenever he hears the decompression alarm and descends immediately to 10,000 feet, uh, which is uh, a safe altitude. Um, we know that the oxygen hemoglobin, uh, or hemoglobin disassociation curve due to air hunger will always move to the right to decrease the affinity to hemoglobin. Now we'll talk about uh, Helios Airways flight number 522. This aircraft suffered severe decompression Actually, it's a Boeing 337 operator Helios Airways, then number five Bravo, Delta Bravo Yankee. Passengers on board 116, there, is, uh, there are five crew, and the destination is Larnaca, Athens, Brag. The survivors uh, are zero survivors, 
and the site of the crash is Marathon, Greece. So what happened here? It is a nice day, August 14, 2005, 9 a.m. The scheduled departure time was 9 a.m. The aircraft took off from Larnaca Airport at 9.07. At 9.11, the pilot report air conditioning problems. At 9.15, the aircraft flight data recorder register an alarm at 14,000 feet. This alarm actually was a decompression alarm. What happened actually, the pilot, uh, when he heard the decompression alarm, he thought that this alarm was due to malpositioning of the flaps, so he shut down the alarm. Now we have here uh, two uh, mistakes. The first mistake uh, is impulsivity. The pilot has an impulsive personality. Uh, actually, impulsive personalities, they uh, think of the first uh, uh, problem, uh, the first uh, the first things that come to their mind, and then they do it immediately. Uh, there is another mistake here in aviation medicine, we call it departure from standard operating procedure. So whenever you have an alarm in the cockpit, you have a standard operating procedures, you have to follow uh, those procedures and you have to uh, go back to your checklist what you should do. Uh, so we have here two problems which uh, led to uh, air disaster the impulsivity of the pilot and the uh, lack of uh, departure operating procedures. Actually, the air traffic controller was trying to communicate with the pilot. Uh, we have in the aircraft we have two types of oxygen. 
the oxygen which is used by the cockpit and this is uh, good to last for about two hours and the oxygen which is used by the passenger the oxygen which is used by the passengers it would last for about 10 minutes because it is created by a complex uh, chemical mechanism i cannot explain it now and uh, the pilot uh, uh, oxygen cylinders are good for about two hours so it's good uh, it's, it's quite enough for them to descend to 10,000 feet and it's also enough for uh, 10 minutes uh, oxygen uh, for the passengers to keep them uh, conscious until uh, the pilot uh, reach uh, 10,000 feet. So uh, the air traffic controller, they uh, send a two F-16 jet because they thought this aircraft might be hijacked actually. The two pilots, uh, the, the two military pilots, they approach the aircraft and they found two uh, unconscious individuals in the cockpit and in the cabin passenger, all the oxygen masks were deployed. The uh, left engine is stopped at 11.50, the right engine is stopped at 12 p.m. and the aircraft crashes near uh, Gramatico and the scheduled arrive time to Prague was 1 PM. Very sad story, but it's due to human error. And thank you so much for listening to us, and we'll see you soon in a new uh, episode. Thank you.